And we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Tunde Kolawali, legal practitioner, uh, joins us this morning via phone in Lagos. Uh, Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Yes, please. Uh, all right, let's start off with the punch this morning, and we'll be looking at other papers. Uh, the punch says, please present at a Mephili's Abuja home, stairs controversy. Please present at MFLE's Abuja Homestead's controversy. CBN governor expected to appear in court today over $53 million judgment debt. Uh, please deny arrest move. And DSS says deputy governor not quizzed. These are the writers you find underneath the caption. Subsidy. Federal government borrowing to import fuel, says minister. Uh, Zainab Ahmed quoted on that, and one billion dollars spent to recover territories seized by terrorists. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is quoted to say, "Over 500,000 security personnel to man polling boots uh, for the elections." And just before we move away, National Assembly to OK 22.7 trillion naira debt. Uh, restructuring on Tuesday. Uh, I'm sure you want to find out what that means, but Tunde Kola Wale will be right here to share his thoughts on that. Slain lawyer buried and cleric consoles family. 13 billion naira drugs, military hardware seized at Lagos Airport. These are some of the headlines you find. And a new VC promises to make Unilag Solution Center. There's also a pictorial representation, uh, you know, to that conversation. Now, on the nation, you have article plan sale of nation's asset to allies, says Tunubu. Uh, so the back and forth continues. APC candidate urges Quara to sustain political freedom. Uzodima, Remy, Tunubu rally Southeast women. Uh, you see that picture of, you know, the rally that took place in Car in Quara State, uh, and that's uh, courtesy of the APC. Governors to engage CBN on Naira redesign, and Buhari, Boko Haram sponsor's aim was to split Nigeria. Don't behave like Asu, Ngige tells the new Konoa. <laughs> oh, well. Ainek won't succumb to security threats. It's also another caption you find this morning on The Nation. And while we're still at it, another one says, while we upgraded, upgraded what? Uh, Alaya Day's college to varsity. China's population drops by 850,000 in latest survey. Well, the writers you find this morning on that uh, paper. Now we have this day newspaper. ECWA president, church will announce presidential choice soon. And I think I read, you know, some comment and tweet where someone was saying, hey, why has the church not taken, you know, position or religious organization taken a position as to who they are supporting and who they are not supporting, you know, for the elections? Northern Christians already settled for articles, says Dogara, and Muslim Muslim ticket Recipe for disaster, former vice president wants in a kitty. PDP candidate promises to patronize uh, and prioritize human development. Ionic Hills echoes commission over dialogue with parties ahead of the elections. Ionic will hold election despite attacks on facilities. Um, Mahmoud Yakubu is saying. Federal government, Nigeria has enough external reserve to withstand global recession and shocks. It's also interesting to note, and uh, some people say this is really good because, you know, just maybe we probably might be facing another recession. And uh, cash withdrawal limit banks suspend transaction via Naira credit and prepaid cards. Senate gives minister three-day ultimatum to submit 23.7 trillion Naira ways and means details. And uh, Buhari received a word for strengthening peace in Africa. There's a picture to that effect, you know. 
at the bottom part of the page or the front page of the newspaper, this day newspaper, uh, you find that uh, picture on the president receiving that peace award. But the Guardian is what we will be paying attention to. On easy calm at CBN, as officials uh, grapple with integrity issues, CBN DSS downplay dismiss MFLE's arrest saga as speculative. Officials not in DSS custody, uh, Apex Bank insists. Now, just before we move away from the Guardian this morning and make way for uh, Tunde Kola Wale to share his thoughts, CNPP asked Tunubu Atiku to withdraw from presidential race for alleged misdeeds. Senate demands details of 23.7 trillion naira CBN facility to the federal government. Crisis in Abia PDP over... Uh, Econo's absence will soon name our preferred presidential candidate, Wiki declares. Now, these are some of the issues you find this morning. In 2023, we're ready. INEC Chair uh, Yakubu insists at Chatham House. Now, these are some of the uh, headlines you find this morning on the Guardian newspaper. Let's quickly uh, have our guest share his thoughts. To Nicola Wally, many thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me once again. All right, so quickly, uh, let's start off with the Punch newspaper. The Punch talks about uh, police presence at Emefili's home in Abuja that has stirred a lot of controversy. But according to the report, the police is saying they are there to ensure that Emefili does not escape because he has to be in court today. How do you, uh, you know, react to this? The main regard, with regards to the police presence at Emefili's house. Yes, you want to call it the Emefili saga. Hello, hello. Kola Wale, can you hear me? No, please repeat that question again. So I say, um, let's take a look at the punch. The punch talks about police present at a Mephili's home, which has okay. stirred controversy. Now, according okay. to the police, the police is saying, uh, we're not there to arrest, but we're only there to ensure that he does not escape. He has to be in court today to you know, answer to some uh, issues. Yeah, honestly speaking, I'm of the opinion that um, the massive deployment of uh, the police to Mr. Mephile's house in Abuja, and like we had earlier on read before, also to the CBN headquarters in Abuja, is ill-advised. That kind of postponing uh, will be sending the wrong signal, not just to Nigerians, but to the rest of the world, the international community. I have always said and advocated that when people, when public officials and individuals, even musicians who have been bringing a lot of revenue to the country, are involved in uh, issues or that the government or the security agencies want to investigate them, first investigation should be done in a very discreet manner until they have reached a turning point, until they probably nearly completed the, 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 the investigation before you can now well, go and effect arrest of the person. The Mephile is at the heartbeat of the Nigerian nation as the CBN uh, uh, governor. So when the international community and even the local community begin to see the, the CBN governor being uh, aroused or massive police deployment, massive, I mean, police being massively deployed to his house or to his office and all that, it uh, creates a kind of a panic and makes the international community lose confidence not just um, in our currency, but also with regard to the situation that is happening in Nigeria. Uh, if you say you want to just uh, provide protection or make sure there is peace around his home and all that, there are more discreet ways by which this uh, 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 can be done. Imagine if the council of a check -up. in a prison, for example, if the police are to deploy an uh, amateur of a security man around his own and all that, it will have a very damaging effect on the value of the British fan talent. So also our Naira, the deployment of massive I mean, of policemen, massively the missing of the citizen governor, will have consequential uh, implications on the value of the Naira. And that is why I think no matter what infraction, the Mephile may have con I mean, uh, 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 the may have had uh, if uh, the owners or it would have been better for the security people to undo the investigation of this matter in a very, very discreet manner. 
But, but do you think this has any political undertone? Uh, maybe uh, some people would say that uh, an interference from the executive arm of government. Well, we've been hearing that uh, there's been a lot of discussion tools in the media. Some people uh, have alleged that uh, uh, the harassment of Mesele has a political undertone. Some are also of the opinion that it's a certain person who wants to be, who wants him removed and the CDN government that is behind it. But I would want to say with all sense of responsibility that whatever uh, uh, that whatever problems the Nepali may be having today could be said to be self-inflicted. Why do I say it is self-inflicted? Here is a seizing Fijian governor who has been uh, romancing and dancing with the politicians. It was also alleged at the particular period in time that he tried to contest um, the primary of the APC uh, presidential uh, uh, aspirant. So the Fijian governor or the Chancellor of Mexico is in Britain. He's supposed to not, I mean, he's not supposed to fraternize his politicians. And he's not supposed to have any deal, any deal with his political activity. So when you begin to stick out your neck, to want to go and start contesting, I mean, contesting the presidential primary of a particular political party, and you even went to court to declare an order for, to restrain the, the CDN, the security people, and NORA from disturbing you, from harassing you, from contesting you, from contesting the presidential. Uh, uh, Primary of the APC, then you are causing problems for yourself. You are causing the staffer. You are throwing the past, the politicians in the different device who not want you to throw. So that is the reason why I think whatever is happening to the family today can be said to be just inflicted. He is supposed to be aloof. He is supposed not to fraternize. He is supposed not to be seen around any political activity in the country uh, uh, today in the interest of the nation and the interest of the value of the Naira. All right, but still looking at the punch this morning, there's also another uh, headline that we cannot, you know, move away from. Uh, it talks about uh, at sometimes federal government borrows to fund, uh, borrows fund to buy petrol as the economy continues to subsidize. So we're talking about subsidy bills. Uh, the minister had come out to say that at some point we borrow, you know, to import fuel. Do you, do you think that this is a rational thing, an action? Well, the country is in the Wakmaya. We are between the devil and the deep blue sea. Why do I say this? When we have all the opportunities in the world, when Nigeria was earning a lot of money from uh, sales of uh, food oil to the international community, thought that we could even boast at that period of time that the uh, money is not Nigeria's problem but how to spend it. We ought to have diversified the economy. If we have diversified the economy into so many areas, I see <laughs> agriculture, manufacturing, and war. The family will not find ourselves in the kind of challenges or problems that we find ourselves today, in which the international community is no longer desirous of using software or petroleum products as they used to do. Every nation now is investing in the cars and solar energy and all those other energy that don't exist. The ozone layer that doesn't uh, affect uh, the atmospheric uh, temperature uh, sun. So with that, we find out that demand for petroleum products in the international community is a uh, because people are investing in transitive uh, energy. Furthermore, the crisis in the Niger Delta has not abated. Uh, it is still there. Oil is being stolen in the market place. Where it is not being stolen, the so-called Niger Delta military are making it difficult for the oil company to operate. Also, you have a very fast interest. Compass, Ophis, and War Avenue, who want to have um, a stake in the pie of the mission, that is the oil and resources. All of them, in a way, so to say, as it has been reported, at almost 70%, if not 80% of the crude oil that the Nigerian produces have been stolen and then sold in the international market. So, we have to find out when the resources of the nation, when the money is earned internationally. The revenue that is generated internationally and not flat, begins to drain to. And then you also have massive, massive consumption of petroleum in food. And you also don't have a single refinery working at optimum capacity and all that. The government will have no alternative 
Por eso, tu siguiente un mo de Haitia, o Vito de Dios, 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 o And this oil test in the Nigeria Delta is not on the massive scale as it is today. Nigeria is probably not finding itself in the kind of challenges that it has found itself today. But let me say this. Let me say this, Mercy. All right, go ahead. They will try to subsidize never help any nation. Go and do your research. In most nations that subsidize as you will do, whether it's from agriculture, whether it's from personal resources, or whether from housing and all that, but it's been very massive, massive, uh, upriver. And then they fall back down the line. So I will not advise the federal government to move for a When they do, the problem might be, or the thing might be facing is a gross, gross or poverty on a monumental scale, and then social or fever, unrest all over the country. Because as it is today, inflation is almost at 33%, and then unemployment almost at 60%, and then the food security of the nation is in jeopardy. Oh, well. Uh, Kola Wale, are we, you know, dealing with an issue of um, diversification? Because, I mean, you have mentioned that we haven't diversified the economy, but the economy is diversified. Yeah. The challenge here is, you know, translating uh, whatever it is that we have to reality, to results. And that's what it is. The economic opportunities, the resources that we have, translating it into um, tangible results that would, at the end of the day, impact the entire nation. So uh, will we still say that, you know, the problem that we're grappling with is diversification because the economy has been diversified? No, I disagree with you. If you are going to be talking about the diversification of the economy, you have to look at it from a different perspective. Is Nigeria as a nation to be able to produce all the food that uh, the citizens require to eat on a daily basis? The answer is no. Take a country like China and India, massive, massive population, over 1 billion people, and they don't depend as much as we do on the importation of their food items. In fact, somebody informed them, even though they have not been able to verify that, that if there were to be war in India today, that the Indian people always are, always are at any particular point in time, food storage that will last them for six months if their farmers are unable to produce anything. And if they were to be engaged in a war with any country of the nation, can Nigeria say the same thing? Virtually almost the food, almost all the food that we consume that we consume in this country, especially things like rice and even yam and meat, they have been imported from different parts of, of the world. That will not be if we are driven by the economy. Also look at the IT. Most of the IT products that we consume in this country, most of the software that our banks and other institutions use in their respective offices. They are imported from India, they are imported from China, and then from the uh, from US. Whereas we do know, our children are very, very good in IT. All we need to do is to develop these children. And how do you develop some of these children? You could pick, pick the best uh, students in the university, in the polytechnics and what have you, and secondary school, who are good in mathematics, who are good in the sciences, and then send them abroad to some of the Ivy League universities and then train them, educate them on the software development, on IT, and some of these other areas and all that. And then you bring bond them, let them sign an agreement that they will work for the country for the scholarship that you are giving them for a certain number of years, and then throw them into the economy. So, so, so the when thing China is... was going to develop, that was what they did. And then again, look at the mastering of arms and ammunition. But, but Kola Wale, so, so how do we yeah. explain the fact that, you know, the non-oil sector, as of 2022, I mean, we just started 2023, contributed 94 point, uh, you know, 3-4% to the nation's GDP. And that's a lot. So, um, did you say 93? 94%. Where? I don't know where you got that statistics from. Uh, it's in the public domain. Uh, where? I can I'll tell you that um, sometimes statistics do lie, or sometimes people do lie with statistics. Why do I say that? If the money that the country is earning from the external product or a sort of food waste, this would be $100 before. And then because of the challenges in that sector, 
is sent to about twenty dollars. Invariably, the non oil sector will appear to have increased. Will appear to have about uh, I mean outperformed the petroleum uh, sector. And so if they are leading the statistics from that perspective are not. One is not being truthful to 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 No, but Kola Wale, I th I think that we need to move away because if you. Uh, I understand where you're coming from, uh, Tunde Kolawale, yeah. but if we need to be realistic, let's look at the oil sector. And in that particular report, the oil sector contributed about five point, you know, um, let's say, say five point six six percent. When you juxtapose that to ninety four point three four percent, so maybe the problem is because the oil sector is already failing. We're not doing so well uh, if we say that oil is where we earn a lot. But how far has it contributed in the, you know, in the last year that, that precedes 2023? So, so that's the question. I think that you know, if we talk about the issue of diversification, just maybe we have diversified the economy, but we've not been able to translate it into reality, uh, you know, develop it. Maybe that's where we should you know, channel our attention to, and the conversation should be about developing and ensuring that these sectors are you know, uh, contributing to the nation's economy, not solely because, I mean, we're not totally dependent on oil earnings anymore. That's, that's the conversation. As much as it feels like that's what we're dependent on for, you know, all of the revenues that we're getting and generating. But, uh, you know, it, it's quite different. And you want to agree with me? Well, uh, to some extent, you are right. But my own understanding of economics and the developmental issues tells me that uh, if you are talking about uh, the performance of any sector of economy, it should be a measurable uh, uh, thing. i give you an example. Uh, are we able to produce, for example, the tomato paste that we require or that we eat in this country? Do we produce enough rice? At the time we shut down the border, at the time the federal government pumped a lot of money through the CBA into the Anchor Borrowers uh, Program, at the time, uh, um, some of the uh, dams they are wanting performing or that have been damned or that have been closed or that have been badly damaged in the past and all that. The federal government started investing in them and then uh, opening such dams so that they be able to irrigate farmland for the farm. Also remember uh, that uh, even though with all these investments that are there, the federal government has paid, it is difficult for any farmer to go to the farm now because of kidnapping, because of banditry, because of foreign insurgencies and all that. And that has badly damaged all the investment the federal government has made in the quarter that the state has made that the local government has made. And because of that, we are able to miss our, our food uh, and needs as a nation. I also give you one example. Which of our industry in this country today is producing up to Ultima capacity? The only area in which I see is in the cement sector and also the steelies and, um, and the confectionery sector. Um, and the thing for this is not perfect. Most of the raw material that we need to produce cement is gotten in this country. Most of the raw material that we need to produce beer and cement and other are also gotten in this country. It is only the country and the flavors that you uh, require. But look at the textile sector. Look at the automobile uh, let's move on uh, to other issues. Are not performing. Yes, yeah, yeah. I totally get you know your point this morning where you're coming from, but you, we also yeah. cannot take out the fact that. Uh, whether we're not meeting, you know, the capacity of production in different sector, however, there's still, you know, some effort that's being made. Uh, on this day newspaper, the caption talks about, uh, you know, the elections, if I'm not mistaken. Let's quickly look at the elections and thoughts. And you have uh, a Mephili saying, I beg your pardon, not a Mephili now. <laughs> uh, Mahmoud Yakubu is saying that INEC will hold election despite attacks on facility. And you know that uh, for the past days and months and what have you, there's been you know, several attacks on the offices of INEC across the nation. Do you think that this is a true you know, statement? Do you believe in the statement and assurance uh, from the electoral umpire himself? Well, it is good to be optimistic. If I, if I were in my most position myself, I would call it the same, the same thing. But there are a lot of threats to the holding of the 2003 election, even though it is just a few weeks away. You and I will remember 
that even in the Western, um, that, that even in the Southwest there yeah, of Nigeria, there has been an attempt to burn down uh, INEC offices, uh, INEC facilities have been uh, uh, attacked. Also in the Southeast, you will also remember that several and several times, uh, INEC offices have been bombed and their properties uh, damaged. And also when you go to the northern part of the country, especially the north east of the country, Boronu, Adamawa, and northern, Bantry, banditry has not uh, abated. Even not too long ago, in a those states in here, which appear to be, uh, to be relatively peaceful in the recent times, people went in there and then kidnapped certain persons who wanted to, I think, use the, the train from one part of the country to the other. All these are indicators that everything is not well with Nigeria. And uh, there are a lot of challenges to holding these elections uh, come uh, February uh, uh, this year. More importantly, very, very importantly, too, Nigeria can be said, I mean, with due respect, to be bankrupt. Look at the front page of the, of the paper today. They are talking about it scheduling 2.6 trillion uh, debt. And then the Senate is also asking that they want the federal government to come and explain how they intend to manage, um, I mean, some borrowing that they want to also uh, embark upon. So funding is a challenge for this election. And also security is a challenge to this election because there are so many nationalities who will not want this election uh, to hold. The behavior of the politician themselves is not helping matters. There is uh, the, what, what you hear from there is a cacophony and also drum beat of a uh, war, despite the fact that they have all been made to sign a peace pact, to sign a peace agreement that will, they will conduct themselves in a very, very peaceful manner. But have they been doing that? The answer is no. There is sharper rattling all over the places and all that. But, so, so, but do you like I said? Um, to let Nicola us be optimistic. Wale. Yes. We have no option other than to hold that election. Of course. Uh, I was going to ask if you think that there's any substance to all of these threats, you know, because they're just, they can just be threats. But are there really substance to it? Do you think that the elections will not hold? You've already said that the elections will hold. That's on the one side, because I want you to juxtapose that with the fact that uh, the church is saying they will soon announce their presidential choice. Do you think that there's a problem with that, especially at the time where uh, we're saying, hey, you know, we, we need to just go the Nigerian way. We need to meet <laughs> together and not talk about religion and tribe. But uh, can we take out religion and, you know, ethnicity out of our politics and election? Well, there is nowhere in the world where ethnicity and religion has ever been taken out of elections completely. I give you an example. The last election that was conducted in the U.S., in which a president uh, a Biden, uh, won the elections and all that, most of the blacks in the U.S., majority of the blacks in the U.S., and then the Hispanics and Indians voted for Biden. They didn't vote for the Republican candidate simply because they are not too, com they are not too comfortable with the attitude of the Republican uh, to immigration uh, issues and all that. For me, that is ethnicity. Also, too, you find out that uh, uh, even in the U.S., and then uh, Britain, for example, it's a country that is said to be anchored uh, on, um, on the principles of uh, religion and godliness. Most times and all the times and all that, certain people will prefer certain candidates who belong to their religious uh, uh, views or denomination, as you see sometimes in a place like uh, uh, India. If the developed countries of the world that have been practicing democracy for more than 400 years are still facing the challenges of ethnicity and religion, I'm not too sure that we as Nigerians can wish that a way. We can only manage it. And the way to manage it by, by, is what I mean, is being protected by so many people. And that is why some people are not too comfortable with either a Christian Christian ticket or a Muslim Muslim ticket. Politicians ought to be sensitive to religious issues, so as not to destabilize the peace of the country or to leave any room for suspicion uh, uh, whatsoever. As regards uh, the, the wicked man and his D5 uh, team and all that, honestly speaking, I am surprised that the uh, wiki has not seated the sword uh, up till now. The elections are just a few weeks away, and they are still finding it difficult to announce who their presidential candidates are. Uh, or, or whatever presidential candidate they are likely to, to support. In fact, I have seen that the alliance of the G5 people 
is beginning to crumble. Why is it crumbling? Take the Imaki Day, for example. The information that we are getting from the Great Time is that the Imaki Day has said that they should vote for a city uh, at the last rally that he had in Mapo. And even when he didn't say that, most of the people that have ended the rally were hard and were seen to be shouting, Sai Atiku, Sai Atiku, Sai Atiku. That is to say, if you imagine the, the governor of the for example, didn't support a Tiku presidency, chances are that that is also going to affect his governorship uh, um, uh, election come uh, this uh, February 2023. You also find out that the governor of, um, is it Atamawa or what are they? I also going back to the article, uh, uh, article uh, camp. So, for so me, I suspect uh, that, that we can go down. Oh. Came and come back to the fold and support articles the presidential uh, uh, campaign. I mean, the uh, presidency, especially with the effort that the Northern Elders, uh, with the effort that the Northern Elders Forum are making to reconcile articles and we can. So, 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 I mean, the question that's been on uh, the minds of a lot of Nigerians is why has WIKE not, you know, left the People's Democratic Party? Uh, we see that that's, uh, you know, a practice that's common among a lot of persons. When you feel dissatisfied with the system, then you move away. Not necessarily because, you know, the interests of the parties at it, but, you know, still staying within the party and acting and, you know, putting out all of these actions and moves is what is... Uh, very surprising to a lot of persons, but we don't have time. Just in less than a second, I'd like to share your thoughts on this. The statement from Chris Ngige to Konoa saying, don't act like Asu. That's what Ngige told, you know, Konoa. Honestly speaking, we appear to be a nation that is never conscious of history. Uh, people who are of my age will remember that uh, when Obasanjo was in power as minister of state and all that, and during the time of Abangida as minister of state and all that, there were so many unions all over the country. There were so many unions all over the country. Such that this time there was a try, each time there were challenges and all that. It was always difficult for the federal government, for the state government, for the local government to know what union to approach and to talk to, and to know what union to say, please. Uh, call of this aside and go back to work. It was based on the way numerous trade unions that we had all over the country at that period in time, that generation of passengers and the Papangida at that time, they streamlined the trade union and then reduced it to the Nigerian Labour Congress so that they will have just one solid, one strong Labour House that they can always approach and talk to anytime they are challenged or when there is a, 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 a strike. The proliferation of unions does not help matters. So if Mr. Ngiji were to be alive uh, to that uh, aspect of our history, or if the federal government were to remember that aspect of our history, they will remember, they will know, they will realize that it is not in the best, their best interest to start promoting another trade union. All right, within the well, we have to system. go. The, this Even is the, the point where... We, have in there now, we, find it difficult to manage we have to you go. Uh, Tunde Kolawale, thank you so much. We have to go, but... Uh... Uh, one would want to begin to ask whether this is also the impact or the effect of taking out history from our curriculum. <laughs> Probably would it affect those who of your age? I'm sure you had gone through history class and that's why you know this, but uh, we say that that's also the implication. But I, I will come back to that conversation some other time. Thank you so much, Kola Wale, for being part of Thanks the show. Thanks for having me. You yes. have a lovely day. Uh, we wish you the same. Thank you so much to Nicola Wale, is a legal practitioner. He joined us via phone this morning to uh, bring great insight on the papers this morning right here in Lagos. Uh, we'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at another issue. Uh, we're looking at the issue of labor group asking the government to stop fuel subsidy and importation. Stay with us.